Hello and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine for you video. Today's video is a little tricky. It's uh, it's not about how to tell a trick that you can do within Unreal, but it's how to do uh, one of the gameplay elements with a tricky way within Unreal Engine. So basically, uh, when you play uh, lots of games like uh, Batman Arkham series or playing Max Payne series or whatever, there is uh, when you kill the last enemy within an area it's a game designers way and method to tell you that you clean the area they give you something called kill cam or the last kill cam so the last kill cam is basically like slow motion with camera movement around the last character but the trick is how you tell this is the last character so basically you might have like a, a 10 uh, bad guys around you and when you kill them every time you kill in a different order so there is no guarantee that this character will be always the last character to kill. So you have to do this in a certain way. And always uh, you might need to change how the camera move or the camera animation itself. So we are going to cover all those things. Uh, well, we are not going to cover all those things, but we are going to explain how to make a kill camera, the last kill camera, and how to use it, and give some ideas about how to uh, customize this. So what we have here is a survival game, uh, it's an example made by uh, Tom Lumen. you can get it from uh, the Unreal forums here, it's a nice project, I'm going to use it because uh, it offers me with player and enemies and shooting, so I don't have to do this from scratch. And you can get it from GitHub here, you can clone or fork or just download zip or whatever. Anyways. Uh, so we start here, uh, we have uh, within the map there is uh, like 5 or 6 uh, zombie characters so I collected all of them and put them in one spot to make it easier for me to shoot them and kill uh, all of them uh, but there is one thing within this game, it keeps spawning enemies so we are not going to uh, work based on how many enemies are in the area uh, we are going to work these six enemies only. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, that's pretty much what we need to tell. So, yeah, uh, here is the zombie character because it's C++, so you cannot find any logic in here. But there is uh, all the inherited uh, components, uh, and this is the C++ class for zombies, which will be enemies. So zombie character. So here is header file and here is the source file. So I'm going to search for the word kill. Okay, thank you. And I'm going here. This is here. Whenever uh, it gets hit, it detects if it's killed or not killed. So I'm going to add some logic here to code blueprint. So I, I'm not preferring to dive more into the source code for this game. I I didn't check it already. I didn't check it already. So. Uh, I want to do stuff on the blueprint side. So uh, I'm going here to call a uh, blueprint function. So um, let's say if output device no. If, so there is a previous tutorial I, I explained how you can call a blueprint function from the C++ code. So I'm going to call uh, this in the pointer and uh, call function. My name is arguments. So I'm trying to apply whatever we explained in previous tutorials, apply in the future tutorials. So we're going to say text and the method name is going to be on get killed and uh and true. And that's it. So I'm going to call this function whenever the zombie get killed. Uh, make sure I save and come here and let's add a custom event. Call it the same name and let's just for now print something says killed. We just do it in red color. So make sure it's you can see it. I'm going to save. And yeah, don't forget to compile because we've done some changes. That took really long time. Yeah, 
comparing to just two lines of code being entered. Anyways, uh, now let's just hit play and expect the behavior that whenever I kill any of the enemies, I see a message at the top left corner saying killed. So I'm going to start shoot those guys. So yeah, kill, kill, kill. So so I saw it three times. Yeah. So it works. I can see them. So the next step is to count enemies. Uh, I know that we have here six enemies, but because we have like keep spawning enemies, so I, and I don't want to get more into the logic for spawning enemies and those things. Uh, so I will just work based on the six enemies. I would consider that there is only six enemies within this map or within this area. Uh, so yeah, you can put the code for uh, you can put the like. Uh, you can store the number of enemies within the game mode, you can store it within the level blueprint, you can store it as a player. Uh, it depends how the game works actually, so uh, I'm not super uh, interested now in where to put this, so uh, I might put it in the game mode actually. Uh, it's the most safe place for now, so this is uh, into maps and modes, and this is the game mode used for this game, so I'm going to open this, and let's add a variable here. And let's call it uh, max kills. Let's say this is max kills, and this is going to be an integer. And let's make it public. And let's add one more thing: current kills. And I'm going to set this value actually beforehand because I know it's uh, six. So uh, I'm going to put this as six, and current kills is zero and I'm going to save so whenever I do a kill here after print killed I'm going to get game mode I'm going to get game mode and then I'm going to cast to it's called survival code game mode syrup so it should be this one I'm going to cast to this one and if it's true uh, I'm going to print just hello just to make sure this is the one used and yeah uh, I'm checking actually for now because probably maybe the creator of this example have changed the game mode at the beginning of the map so I'm going just to make sure uh, I'm using the correct game mode for now so I should see hello if it's the correct game mode so hello so yeah it's the same game mode that's used here uh, okay so after getting this game mode, I make sure it's it the game mode and killed. So, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to set the current kills to to the current kills plus one, and then I'm going to check if it's more than or less than uh, more than or equal to six if it's more than or equal to six it means this is a lost kill and if it isn't so it means it's not lost kill or something so uh, I'm going to here print lost kill and actually let's just disable this message for now so I'm going to actually sorry before running this I have to compare not with six but let's compare with the maximum uh, this is actually why I have added this maximum value to, to be able to change it easily from here and it's not hard coded so let's run again uh, where am I okay yeah here so when I kill the last enemy, I should see something say it's last kill. So nothing yet. It should be the last guy. Uh, I didn't see anything. Oh, still there is another guy here. Okay. Yeah, it says last kill, so it works now. Okay, let's close this. We don't need the game mode anymore, and probably we don't need Visual Studio. It's closed because I can hear the fan kicking now. I'm sure Visual Studio is not going to change anything with the fan, but uh, just close it. 
Okay, now for the lost kill camera itself, we need to have uh, this is our enemy, so we need to have whenever you kill a character in a game, the camera directly changes. If if you are the player, it changes from your view and go to somewhere around the enemy, and then it's it just like moved around the enemy or something like this. So we need to have a start point for the camera movement and then an end point to the camera movement. Regarding those points, we can have them like billboards or arrows or whatever, but I prefer to put them as cameras. Why cameras? Because when I put a camera here, I can get an idea how the camera or what the camera is going to show. So when I put the camera here, I know that when I start viewing from this camera, I'll be seeing the enemy from this side and probably I'll be seeing his top part of the body, something like this. So I'm going to call this camera start and I'm going to duplicate this and call it camera end and I need to make sure that auto active is disabled for both cameras because if it's enabled when I start playing uh, the actor blueprint or the player or whatever this type of class is probably going to pick one of those cameras and use it to render so I'm going to put this in here so it gives me an idea that the camera will be moving from here to here when the last kill happens so I'm going to just make it something different higher or something you can just play around for a long time here and do your tests but anyways I think this is probably something good maybe this is a little closer and something like this anyways this is the start point and this is the end point okay and then I'm going to add here actually a, a variable called is kill cam, which is false by default, and this is tells me if it's if it's false. Uh, it tells me that this enemy in instance is have is having a kill cam playing now or no. And yeah, we can yeah I think yeah. So we can come here again to the graph. So in, yeah, it tells it's lost kill, and we make sure it's lost kill. I need to come here and start spawning spawn actor from class, and the actor class should be camera because uh, we are going to use a function called uh, set view target with blend. It's not here. Uh, set view target with blend and this requires a camera actor here camera actor you cannot use a camera component you need a camera actor so we're going to spawn actor here and this is going to be paste on the start point so we're going to get actor location uh, sorry get wallet location and then get wallet rotation and using both to create a transform make transform and use this transform value to spawn the new camera so we're going to spawn camera wherever uh, this camera this start point is and then we're going to set view target with blend which means we're going to switch the camera from the player to this start point so we are going to choose uh, our target is the player controller ok let's turn this on and for now I'm using this node because I know I only have one player and its index will be always zero and this is going to be the new view target and let's set the time keep the time is zero actually uh, because we need the camera to just jump right away to the start point here and then let's create the same thing here except few changes so we are going to spawn another camera 
just straight away after spawning this and it's camera paste thing but this time we're going to use the end point so same thing and then we will come here we are going to use this camera but at this time we are going to give uh, like a duration for the animation so let's say maybe one second or two is okay and then we are going to set here the blend to easy and out and if this is set to zero the camera will just jump right away so let's give it two or maybe three to make it like faster or something so now the expected behavior when when, when you kill uh, one of the zombies if the zombie is uh, a lost kill uh, if the zombie is a lost kill we are going to spawn camera here and in the world and then we start moving it or doing some a, a blend to another camera that is in this position in the world and when it's done uh, I think it's a good idea to delete those cameras because if we keep having lost kills around our map so let's just destroy some actors so let's destroy actor and let's destroy this camera and let's destroy the other camera the new cameras that we spawned we can recycle them later and use them to do all sorts of things but for now this is enough uh, I think that's it uh, only one thing because uh, set view target with blend is going to execute uh, this pin regardless it's it's the animation is done or no so we can here uh, do like delay or something and this delay should have the same time as this so we can have here a float called uh, plain time and this is the float and by default it's two this is makes it easy to change in the future or something so we can get this plain time and use it here and use it for the delay so yeah let's see how it works so we need to kill six uh, of these creatures of course uh, not all of them I try to keep uh, yeah I'll try to keep this one so yeah this is how it works we can try again okay. uh, we can for example because now once the animation is done uh, the, the other the camera return it to the player so we can just um, just add to the delay so flow plus let's say whatever that the number the amount of blend we just wait two more seconds before we return the camera to the player himself so again uh, where's my sweet zombies yeah they are here uh, so let's just kill 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 and guys and bad zombies go oh, I'm out of ammo okay uh, let's wait until uh, the daytime comes because the light is going to be good when we see a zombie get killed. Uh, I can't see any light. Yeah, now we are morning. So Two seconds and then the camera come back to me again. Uh, we can of course change how the camera looks like uh, easily. Uh, maybe maybe uh, you can write some extra code to randomly move this camera or to randomly pick one of the cameras so you always get a different camera movement uh, you can put some code to randomly change the start point so it, uh, it's good idea too but the most interesting part is that uh, if you played games like Max Payne and and specifically Max Payne one, uh, in, in this game uh, kill cam was amazing, but sometimes it's intersecting with the walls. So if you want to overcome such a problem, uh, I don't think I can have such a situation here now. But anyways, you can always add uh, a spring arm, like the one you use with the character himself, and put the camera like. Uh, the end camera or the new camera or whatever underneath this spring arm and you can enable uh, where is here spring arm dun, dun, dun. not the arm lens and 
yeah do collision test so you can enable do collision test this will make sure that the camera is not going to hit inside any wall or something yeah so you got an idea how to do this how you can get a kill camera uh, and it's up to you how you modify it how you manage it but this is a paid idea of creating a lost kill camera so I hope you learned something new, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and don't hesitate sending uh, your feedback asking for specific tutorials or features or something. We'll be always happy to make tutorials and videos. So yeah, thank you, bye!